Hi you guys, it's Rena. So this video is for the solar eclipse in Leo happening on the 21st of August at 28 degrees of Leo. We've already had a new moon in Leo back in July on the 23rd at zero degrees. This one is almost at the tail end of Leo. So it's kind of like bookends and it's going to be during a Mercury retrograde that we're having this. Mercury will be at 8 degrees of Virgo at this time. And uh, actually, Mercury rules Virgo. So Mercury is in the sign that it rules. And that's very analytical in Virgo. But there may be something going on with us, indiv you know, individually, obviously, in different areas of our life that deals with us trying to get some details together about something that we want to do. And if we bring in what the Leo solar eclipse means, that kind of um, can give us hints as to how it will affect us. Now, obviously, it depends on your particular natal chart where this is going to fall. And even within one sign, for instance, you know, for Leos, we always say, well, this is going to be in your first house. Well, if you're watching as a Leo sun, that's your solar chart. And even then it may not actually fall in that house. So it, it all depends. But in general, what we can say is that the influence of Leo is very fiery and we are going to also have Mars in Leo as well and so we're looking at the Sun and the Moon and Mars all in Leo and all within range of one another because they do form a conjunction the Sun and Moon form a conjunction with Mars so there's going to be a sense of urgency because fire energy is always about wanting to do wanting to accomplish and it's, it's not the same, we do think with earth signs as being productive, but with the fire signs, there's a sense of creativity and a sense of urgency of wanting to do things now, maybe being impatient. And especially when you have a conjunction with Mars from the sun and moon, there's this idea of, I need to do this now. And because of the Mercury retrograde, there may be kind of uh, these stop signs that are saying, no, this isn't quite happening yet. There are a lot of roadblocks. We have to review some things and we have to really look at the fine print because Virgo is about details. But I wanted to kind of emphasize some of this passion and energy because Leo is ruled by the sun, so to have a solar eclipse is even more of an underscoring this idea of the heat that is present. And I was watching some astrologer on YouTube recently, and they were talking about how you can feel the eclipse ahead of time. And I was thinking about that in my own life, and I was thinking, you know, I really have felt kind of on the edge of my seat. I don't know if some of you have felt that sense of agitation or expectancy, an air of expectancy. And this can be even a little bit unsettling because you feel like something is about to give or something is about to happen. It's kind of like right before a storm and there's like this quiet, but there's it's like hushed, but there still is this feeling that something is in the air. And um, it's very unusual because we're looking at a total eclipse. And in the United States, where I reside, there are going to be all these points where you can actually see it, you know, the whole eclipse. And I am hoping that I'll be able to see it. But in any case, it is going to be, I think for, in the United States, the first visible one in 99 years or something. But it's very um, rare what, it, what is about to occur. So we're kind of like going, okay, 
you know, what's going to happen. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about is the fact that Venus will be in Cancer. So Venus has not joined Leo in, in hasn't joined Mars in Leo. And so we do have this kind of compassionate and psychic nurturing energy with Venus where people do have this sensitivity while they are feeling a lot of desire to take action. So that could be a saving grace, although I will note that cancer is a cardinal sign. So cancer isn't as languid as you would expect. Cancers tend to be pretty good at going after what they want in their lives. So it's not like they're just sitting back all the time. Yes, water signs can be passive, but because cancer is cardinal, there may be less of that overall. Now, I did dig out my Jane Spiller book. She's um, an astrologer who passed away, I believe it was last summer. And um, she wrote a book called New Moon Astrology. And I looked up her information about Leo and about what to wish for during the Leo New Moon. And here are some key words that she mentioned. Love and romance, creativity, generosity, celebration and play fun, dignity, determination, and tempering arrogance. Now, Leo rules the fifth house, and these are some of the key words, or at least most of them, that we would associate with the fifth house. Creativity being definitely one of them. I would also add the inner child. Really embracing that part of you that is playful, even if you're an adult, and even if you're not under the age of whatever, 20, 30, even if you're middle-aged or actually on Social Security, you're, you have your um, elder cred, you know, you're, you're up there in years. You, you have an inner child as well. And sometimes we think, oh, I have to be serious. That's what an adult is. That's what a responsible adult is. And that's ridiculous. So I'm going to pick some oracle cards, but first I'm going to pick a tarot card to symbolize some of the energies that are happening for us during this eclipse and what it can mean for you in your life. <laughs> I, I, this might even associate with, um, with Leo. This is definitely fire energy, though. The Six of Wands is a card of accomplishment, accolades. And I definitely feel like this card is talking about not hiding your light under a bushel and not hiding your talents. You know, being proud of your accomplishments. You know, you could even say tooting your own horn, even though you want to do so with moderation and not being a full-blown narcissist. But by the same token, when we have things that we're proud of, there's no reason why we should hide them. And um, I'm so glad that I got that card because that is part of dignity, is embracing all the good that comes your way and not feeling guilty about it, and not feeling like you're not deserving of it. Really feeling like, yeah, I deserve to have this. Oh, interesting. I don't know if I've ever picked this card. Focus upon your strength, Apollo. You know what I think I'm going to do this time just to mix things up? Just read these, these uh, things as I go along. Instead of just waiting until the end. Because all they are are messages anyway, at the end of the day. Okay. 
This card reminds you to focus upon your strengths. And by the way, Leo and Major Arcana, the strength card, and not upon any perceived weaknesses. Your strengths could include your loving heart, pure intentions, people skills, hobbies, or something you, that you excel in. Even if your talents still need polishing, these are strengths and assets. The more you bless and appreciate your strengths, I would go back to that card, the stronger they'll grow. If you focus upon so-called weaknesses, they will grow. There's, there's a saying with the, the law of attraction. Whatever you focus upon increases. This card comes to you as a reminder of the importance of viewing yourself with compassion and love. Anytime you feel yourself thinking or feeling poorly about yourself, focus upon your strengths instead. Additional meanings for this card. Use daily positive affirmations to lift your energy and faith. Speak of yourself in positive terms. Begin an exercise program to build and tone your muscles. This is a message of love or healing about a brother or brother figure. And just in case you're wondering about Apollo, Apollo is the Greek sun god. <laughs> sun? You know something that is interesting that I picked the sun god because um, that is often, sorry about that, I'm trying to get it like to be exactly even. Um, the, the sun god, uh, you know, that goes along with the fact that Leo is ruled by the sun. Talk about synchronicity. Who is the sun of... S-O-N, of course, of Zeus, and twin brother of the goddess Artemis. Apollo is a powerful deity who can bring about the sunshine in your life. Okay, now come on. Come on. This is totally cool. Totally synchronistic. Literally and figuratively. Renowned for his physical strength, Apollo can also act as a personal trainer to motivate your exercise program. He can also help you gain emotional and intellectual strength. Well, I love this. And because I enjoyed that so much, and this is the Ascension, uh, I'm sorry, the Ascended Masters. This is Doreen Virtue. Because I enjoyed that so much, I think I'm going to also pick one from the Keepers of the Light Oracle deck. And I haven't used this one lately. I'm just going to show you this because it's so cool. All right, let's see what I get with this one. All right, well, this is interesting because it's yellow. This looks like the sun, too. Hope and acceptance. Love is yours. Recognize your divine worth. Choose loving thoughts. This is kind of like what we just said. I mean, that's like self-esteem, and we kind of associate that with um, Leo. You know, the sun in astrology is your healthy ego. And it does relate to your self-concept. Hope is an angel who is dedicated to promoting the idea that we on earth are loved, cherished, and supported by the kingdom of heaven. She is all about helping us see the light beyond whatever darkness we are in. Traveling is part of a holy trinity, faith, hope, and charity. She helps us recognize that hope isn't about wishing for something good to happen or help to arrive, but trusting that support is already present. Hope is the twin flame of Archangel Gabriel. Gabriel, I guess. She has a gentle presence, but she is absolutely glorious. She sings sweet harmonies to us, and these songs are waves of love, washing away anything that stands between us and self-love and acceptance. Angels are gathering around you in celebration that you are finally willing to see how loving and lovable you are. Hope is here with her legion of love angels, guiding you to see that you deserve loving relationships, loving experiences, and loving acceptance from the world around you. It seems that you're really moving beyond the limitations that you once had in this department, but know that whenever you do question your worth, you can call on hope to shine her golden light upon you. Your angels want you to know that they love and cherish you, and they're grateful that you're giving yourself the same support. Wow, that's really cool. 
So far I do sense a theme. And um, okay, I think I'm going to just end with Earth Magic. Since we're having an eclipse, I might as well have something with the earth. If it seems like I'm dropping things left and right, the answer to that question is yes, or observation. Ceremony, invocation. I, I got that card recently, it might have been for, it was probably for a private reading, or a Vimeo reading or something. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Whether through indifference, depression, life crisis, or any other manifestation of mental, emotional, or physical blockages, you have drifted from the intimacy with spirit for which you yearn. It is important to do what you can to regain an experience of spiritual power that is contained within you and all around you. Do so by conducting a ceremony, one that involves not only spirit but also material objects you consider sacred. Set up an altar in a convenient area that is apart from your usual living space. Start with representations of the four major elements, earth, air, fire, and water, and then just add a few sacred objects. Set your intention for the ceremony, such as whether the purpose is for healing, celebration, or honoring a particular earth season or cycle. Then do an invocation to call upon your spirit guides. Breathe their presence and ask these divine beings to guide you throughout the process. Trust their guidance. Feel your heartbeat and keep breathing. Breath is the key to the actual experience of spirit. And creating a ceremony is the vehicle that supports this. And yes, there are, there are um, people who will, you know, that do this. You talk about paganism. And these... Full moons, in this case, new moon, they do rituals. I've always been kind of shying away from rituals just because I'm a spontaneous person. I don't like to do things just because they've been done before. But I like what I like about this is that it's something that you're creating. You're creating your own rituals. I think what I don't like about the word ritual is it seems like it's going to be this thing you have to do over and over again. But if it's something that connects you to a specific event, like this solar eclipse, and it makes you feel that you are really honoring it for its unique qualities, and you're very intentional, about what you want, then I believe you can manifest that. And you're very intentional about what it is that you're looking to manifest, then I think it can be a very powerful time for you. It depends on how you feel about all of this. At the very least, what you can do is to have a notebook and to, to write down things that come to you that relate to what you want to see for your future, what you envision for yourself. With this solar eclipse, it's such an important portal for planting seeds. And because it's an eclipse, it could be something that is more of a change beyond your control, not necessarily connected to an action that you take. Maybe it's going to be more faded, more what was supposed to occur. But you can always choose to do things that support these changes rather than resist them. And maybe that's what you are more interested in 
dealing with than, than actually planting seeds. More like how can I best cope with these changes that are going to be occurring in my life and everyone else's life on some level, in some way. So I'm very excited about this because I think that there is a turn turning point that's happening in 2017. There's just a few things that make me think that this particular solar eclipse is special. And the biggest one is that there were two new moons, or there will be two new moons for Leo. And then there's the fact that it's the, the North Node is in Leo. So it makes me think, and even Jupiter is at a friendly angle in a sextile in Libra. So I think the like I think I was like um, adding up the date, and I think it adds up to three. So we have eight plus, yeah. And three in the Major Arcana is the Empress card. The Empress connects with the Venus and sensuality, but also abundance, creativity, fertility. So the number three is a great number of manifestation, too. It's all good, you guys. Good luck to you. Take care. Bye.